Here we go. Hey everyone, thank you for joining us on this little sit down. We are discussing starting your own biomed business and who better to do this with than somebody that has started their own business. And there's a lot of intricate details and it can be very confusing for people that are going from working from a business to starting their own, or maybe not even starting a business, maybe just, you know, exploring their options as an individual contractor. So, uh, Jason, he is from Bright Idea Dental Repair, who also hosts the Dental Equipment Repair Channel. And he's joining us right now because he's been in the business and his business is booming up there in Michigan. And uh, this is probably a proper avenue for getting accurate information. So Jason, thanks for joining us, man. Um, I've got a series of questions here for you. And uh, some of these were written to me by other people. And some of them are the ones that I'm curious about because after our last conversation, I'm thinking about starting up my own business out here. So I, I think it's going to happen. So some of these are my questions. Some of these are from other people. So thanks, man, for being here and doing this. I, I do appreciate this. You bet. It's great to be here. Thanks for having me. I really appreciate it, Justin. Excellent. Well, okay. So the first, the number one question that I have for you is, uh, has starting your own business been worth it? I would say the journey that I've been on over the last four years has been really, um, really challenging. This has been the single hardest thing I think I've ever undertaken in my, my whole life. Um, it, it started in 2017. I um, was doing side work for, a, uh, for my own dentist. And then it kind of slowly, like I was doing side work all along, but I think once I was um, I was doing work for my dentist on dental equipment and kind of the moment for me, I think that really started me down this road because I think how I got into it, like to the extent that I'm in is, is a relevant to the discussion. I was okay. doing the, the side work and I was, uh, I was billing $50 an hour and my dentist, she said, Jason, you need to charge me more. And I said, what are you talking about? Cause I was just doing like bill delivery unit repairs. I was just charging her for my time. And I was uh, finding parts on RPI or on uh, the internet. I was going to Amazon or there's different resellers out there. And I was buying parts um, and then getting them in and putting them in. And it was very limited, but um, I asked her, I'm like, well, how much should I charge you? And she said, well, right now, a major supplier is charging me $75 to travel into my office. And they're charging me $150 every half hour. What? And so I told her, I was like, okay, doc. I said, how about this? I won't charge you travel and I'll only charge you half of that. So 150 an hour. And she said, deal. Oh my so God. that was how my first introduction into dental repair. And like, that was actually how I set my rate initially. So I, I know there's be some money questions later, but, um, but that was what really made me stop and say, you know, man, there could really be something here with starting my own business because we're men of logic. Yeah. And I think, you know, we've all got bills, we've all got things that we have to do. And um, part of the kind of the mental uh, exercise I had to go through to get self-employed, I think it's important to note that I've got three children and my wife has MS. So healthcare is extremely important to us. And my background is actually as a biomed in the United States Air Force. I spent 12 Same. years active duty, Eight of that was in a, uh, is, is a biomed. Four of that was as an aircraft hydraulics mechanic. <laughs> and then that was the first four. And then I spent four years in the California Air National Guard. So I was sitting right at 20 or at right at, I'm sorry, right at 16. I had taken four years off and it occurred to me that if I want to start my own business, I would have to dial in health kit insurance. And it's very expensive. And I knew just even at 150 an hour, the overhead and, and really just trying to generate business is hard. I know we, we're going to be talking about that. So what I ended up doing was I went and um, I went and I went back into the MEPS and I actually went through MEPS a second time and I re rejoined the Michigan Air National Guard. So I'm actually, uh, I'm still in the, in the guard okay. and that guard component was what allowed me to have a little bit of stability and to um, also get health insurance for my family, because that was the main reason I was serving at that point. Well, 
now um, I was doing, so I was hustling at the business. I was doing the Air National Guard. And before I quit my job, I signed up as a student to use my Montgomery GI Bill, my post 9-11. So I was drawn it. That was my little tr- three-legged stool that I was sitting on. And that was how I launched the business. Wow. That was, that must've been crazy hectic. Dude, it was, it was so scary. <laughs> I literally, and it was something funny. Like I, the night before I resigned from my job, I watched, um, I watched uh, Shawshank Redemption and uh, Andy Dufresne goes, uh, get busy living or get busy dying. And wow. I think that's ultimately the approach um, that you've got to take with this. I mean, this is serious. You're, if you've got a family, it's serious. Now, if it's, if you're batching in, you got money in the bank um, to start my business, I had to pull out 8,000 for my life savings. And so that was what I did. I took it out of my, my, um, my savings there. And I um, bought a bunch of test equipment, biomed test equipment, safety analyzers, defib, you know, like, I mean, you know, it all your test equipment, I, I bought as much as I could. And thinking that I was going to start a biomed business. And I called it J and D medical maintenance because I'm Jason and my wife, Deshaun. And I just thought, okay, this is what we're going to do. And um, that was how we got started. I was in school a couple days a week. And then I um, was out trying to generate, um, just trying to build a customer base and just really just hustling, trying to get any kind of um, any kind of opportunity I could. And just really, you know, there was a lot of cold calling. Okay. Wow. So uh, now that being said, is there anything you would do differently getting started? Well, I changed my business from a biomed business to a purely dental business. So I would say, I would say that I would have started off focusing on dentistry. I started focusing on general biomed. But what I found was that the equipment that we service as biomeds in the private sector, there's not enough emergencies with it. There's not enough pain. And pain with equipment is that same thing like with a patient, right? A patient's not going to go get seen unless they're in pain. And doctors are the same way. (laughs) If they've got equipment that they're not like really... I mean, I don't know if, if it can, if they can live with it in the closet, dude, they're going to put it in the closet, right? (laughs) If they can't, right. I mean, if they can't live with it without it, then they're going to call you at 2 AM. And so dentistry has a whole bunch of stuff where they'll call you and they really need it to work. And one of the common denominators, and this is what really I've learned over the last, you know, almost five years is that dentistry equipment is water-based. It has water in it and you can't ignore water leak. Mm -hmm. And so delivery units have water, either the water is leaking or it's not flowing. Mm -hmm. There's also water in autoclaves, which is a really common item that I service. And it's a really huge part of our business. And there's also water in dental suction and also compressors. Compressors can actually have water where it's not supposed to be. And that can actually result in problem. The fact that atmospheric air has water in it means that compressors need service because those compressors have to remove the atmospheric water. And as biomeds, we're really not, we don't really know a lot about compressors in vacuums, but I'm just telling you, there's a compressor in a vacuum inside of every single dental office that you drive by. And they're all in need of maintenance and probably most are neglected and they need us. It's interesting because as a fellow military biomed, we were trained on compressors and stuff, you know, back, back in the day. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I never thought about that as a civilian biomed, they, they wouldn't be trained on compressors or refrigeration systems or anything. That's all stuff that was required of us, but Mm -hmm. uh, that's really interesting. Good points, man. Uh, So here's the thing that I'm really curious about. What type of licensing do you need if you want to start your biomed business? Is it like a state license, a city license? Like what, what is required? So what's needed is you have to, um, if you're going to be doing business, you need to be signed up properly with your, you know, with whatever state or um, you said this is a global audience. So yeah. whatever your governmental overseers are, 
you're going to be doing business and collecting money. And therefore you are going to owe taxes to somebody. And you're also going to have certain rules you're going to need to follow with regard to zoning for businesses. Are you going to, is it going to be a home-based business? Are you, um, you know, you're going to need, you know, if you get a building, you're going to need to, you know, have, you know, there's going to be business stuff you're going to have, you know, so it's like it, in the beginning, it's super easy because all you have to do is get in your car and just go start knocking on doors. Right. And then as people hire you, you get the resources necessary to fix those problems. But what will happen is you'll begin to, you know, accumulate stuff. You'll get stuff. And then you'll, you know, be like, hey, do you want this chair? Do you want this delivery unit? Do you want this light? And in the beginning, you're going to start like just taking this stuff in. And then this magical thing will happen that, you know, somebody will need something used and you'll have that. So, you know, regulatory, I, I, Michigan, I tell you what, is a great place to do business because it's been really simple. There's no, there's really no red tape to me doing any business. I do have to register x-rays I install with the state of Michigan. Right, of course. So I've got to fill out the, um, the, is that the, the 2579s. I've got to fill those out and I've got to mail the one to the FDA over in, you know, Maryland. And then I've got to email a copy to our state. Ohio is really intense. You've got to go through, um, you've actually got to go through training to service x-ray equipment. So really, if you're going to be doing dental x-ray, you need to make sure you're, you're set up with your state. Right. But for me, it's been a pretty easy path. I would say just the nuts and bolts of doing business has been, and, and having employees has been a challenge. That's been the, the biggest challenge for me. Okay. That's understood. Um, I imagine your local biomed society can probably help you out with compliance you know, as far as uh, state licensure. Um, th that's interesting. Mm -hmm. What about uh, insurance, like liability insurance? We talked once before and you said that uh, repairing dental is actually cheaper, uh, cheaper form of liability insurance. Um, now, what if, if I were to insure myself, what could I expect for like out of pocket to get going? What do you think? My insurance, when I started, I struggled to find an insurer that was actually able to insure dental equipment. Mm -hmm. Now, just like I told you, dental equipment has a lot of water in it. Mm -hmm. And so because of water, you've got really a likelihood of water damage, flooding, you know, th these little quarter inch or eighth inch lines, if they run all weekend and you were the last one to touch it, you know, there's some real, like you could have, there's some very bad scenarios. Mm -hmm. And um, there are things that are in place in dental offices called water security systems. There's like some ways of dealing with this. Ultimately, it's um, the liability I found is like the insurance itself in the beginning, it was a couple grand a year. But what happens is as you start doing more business, you, you're, you, you'll be hiring employees. Right. You'll need to have like employee, you know, like, like uh, um, you know, workers comp. You'll need to have, you know, uh, you know, for your vehicles, for your building, you know, oh. I've got a 6,000 square foot <laughs> warehouse here yeah. and there's a bunch of stuff in it, right? Like what if the building burns down? So like, there's a lot of um, insurance, but in the beginning, you just really need to insure yourself. And I would tell you one of the best things you can do is really just work with customers that, you know, you can establish trust with. When you start getting, you know, and, and I'll, I'll tell you, when you first start out doing this, some of the customers you're going to get are the ones that have burned every other bridge that there is out there. And you're kind of the next line of bridges for them to burn. And so the thing is, in the beginning, you need these customers because they're going to be, be the ones that you kind of learn on and that call you out. Because even though you're, I promise, this has been the, the hardest part of this is what I'm doing now, it's, I'm a biomed, but I'm also a field service engineer. And there's a difference. And I think as biomeds, unless we've been field service engineers where we're responsible of having a territory, um, if like, you've got to basically swagger into a office that you've never been in before, where things aren't working right. And that is hugely challenging because you're basically walking in on fire and you don't even know what normal looks like because I th I'm thinking about the good days of being a biomed. And I used to, you know, you kind of just know all the staff 
you kind of can kind of go around, make the rounds. I used to love that. Yeah. And now what's cool is I kind of have the same thing because instead of having ER, ICU, OR, you know, PACU, instead of having all those places, I've got just different offices. Okay. And so I walk in the back door of any of these offices and I've got these little microcosms of staff that are, you know, they're my people as, as much as your ER would be your people. Right. And they love to, they love you as much as your, as your, your hospital staff do. That's interesting. So uh, when you have all these costs that you're trying to juggle, mm -hmm. do, do you use uh, a software like QuickBooks or something to help you organize and prepare? Yes. Um, in the beginning, I used QuickBooks Online, which I would highly recommend that that's, that's one of the first steps you're going to take. Um, let me tell you kind of a couple of the first things that I did when I started. Okay. The first thing that I did was I went to freedom voice online and I picked a phone number and because I needed for somewhere for someone to call, right? Not myself. In the beginning, I knew that there had to be a way to insulate myself from my business. Right. Um, because one thing I'll tell you is in, if you're just trying to make a job for yourself, then that's entirely different than trying to start a business because the business needs to be able to run without you. And I think that's something that you've got to really do some soul searching on, because I think a lot of us say, well, I'm going to start a business, but if you're the only one that's going to be working there, essentially you're just making yourself a job. Okay. And that matters because there's going to come a point where you're, you know, you're an awesome biomed, you're an awesome dental tech, you're awesome these doctors talk and they're going to begin telling each other about how awesome you are and your phone's going to begin ringing. And there's going to come a point where you're going to hit probably around 300,000 a year and you're not going to be able to handle it. And you're not going to be able to go on vacation. You're not going to get any rest. You're going to be working all the time and you are going to just get really tired. I know because I've been there. And for me, the way out of that initially was to hire a part-time technician that turned into a full-time technician to do a portion of my bench work. I gave him autoclaves. And so the strategy is you basically have to bring in people that you can train to do portions of the work that are bench type work so that you can be out there fighting the fires you need to fight, right. but then they can actually be doing... so. So you see, it's not like really an easy question to answer because there's a lot of things around insurance where as your business grows, you're going to have to, um, you will have to, uh, you know, really, really scale, scale it up. Okay. Well, you, you mentioned something really important there because when I talk about um, starting a biomed business, I think a lot of people think you have to start an LLC and, and go that way, which is not the truth. Uh, no. In fact, uh, what's happening more and more often, because trust me, my phone rings throughout the day for people mm. that want me to do 1099 work. So yeah. that, that is another option that biomeds have is if you just want to do side work, or let's say you want to start easing up later on in your career, you can do yes. 1099s with trusted vendors and maybe come in, do bench work or something for them, or handle very select equipment that you're trained on. You know, maybe not too many people are trained on it anymore. So you, you can't start a business or you can be an independent contractor. So. Now, here's, here's something that's, uh, that I learned because uh, I can't really bring, like if you were in my area, I couldn't really hire you as an independent, a 1099, unless you had your own insurance. Mm. So you would actually, in order to do this, you would need to carry your own insurance. And that's actually prevented me from hiring independents before because a lot of guys want to get the side work without, and then- now you've got to get insurance, but then you're working under your name and your social. Right. The beauty of starting a business like I did, okay? So I started the business, um, j and Medical Maintenance. I got the phone number. My number, the number I picked was 734-544-5444. <laughs> so it's right there. I, I picked that number because it's memorable. Right, right. And so that's your moment, right? Where you can make that one decision where you can just say, all right, I'm going to do this in a way where like, because that number has been for me with day one, the business has made a bunch of changes, but the number stayed the same. Now, the nice thing about Freedom Voice is that you're able to send that phone call to different cells, you can send it to different places. And now actually, my whole call tree runs through that. So 
that was one of the things I did. The other thing was QuickBooks Online. Okay, I was going to get there. QuickBooks Online is nice because you can invoice from QuickBooks. And you can, in the beginning, you've got all your customers in there. When they pay you, you can see your bank account. And then at the end for taxes, you can run a report out of QuickBooks, which really makes it easy to kind of like keep all that together. Mm -hmm. The other thing you're going to do is when you open your QuickBooks account, you're going to go open a business banking account, but it'll be your name. It'll be under you, but you're going to find a bank to bank with. So all the checks go into that bank account for the business. And then everything you spend goes out of that account. And so that account is the one that you run everything out of. So when, when you're setting up your business, you want to have it kind of be come its own little encapsulated thing. Right. You don't, because, because if you do start an LLC, which, which I did, um, you want to be insulated from the business. So that's why you really need to have everything kind of running through there. And I don't regret starting an LLC. It was like $50 with the state of Michigan, it was pretty easy. You pick a name and I think it's a smart move because it is, you've got to run it right, but it does provide a layer of protection right. against individual lawsuit. Cause I mean, otherwise, right. you know, they can come after you individually. And I've seen, you know, I, I mean, it's occurred to me, right. That we could be out here trying to make 150 an hour doing things that could really put us, you know, at hundreds of thousands of dollars of risk. And so you got to be smart about the work you take on. That's a, definitely a factor what, what you do. You have to have pretty good uh, judgment. Hmm. So the, those are some initial steps I took. And uh, the insurance is really a pretty small part of that. I ended up going with a f uh, firm out of um, Arizona. But then I ended up finding a local um, provider um, named uh, McCready Insurance. And that has actually been my insurer with the local agent. And um, he, I would say I've been treated very well by them. They've grown with my business. And I can highly recommend that anybody who's looking to get into this line of work, call, find your local McCready agent. Um, my agent, Mike Spadafore, he's actually told me that he's willing to work with other colleagues in other areas, even though he's in Michigan, you might be somewhere else. Um, Mike would love the referrals and he knows my risk. He's been with me for about two or three years now. So if you're looking to start a dental business, all you have to do is say, Hey, Mike, I'm looking to start a business like Jason's. And then he can go ahead and kind of go over the particulars and get you started out. Interesting. Oh man. So, um, here's something that I personally have to improve on. Uh, do you itemize like your mileage, your rent, obviously your, I don't know if it's mortgage or rent for you, uh, insurance, your licenses, tools, um, all that stuff. Do you have to itemize all that for, for the end of the year? Do you keep specific track of everything? I do. I'm a pretty bad record keeper in the <laughs> yeah. beginning. I was very, I was very meticulous, like scanning records in and, you know, scanning in receipts and, you know, really, but honestly, now that my business is getting bigger, um, I've got three technicians that work in addition to me. And then I've got one uh, part-time admin. And then my wife is the lead admin. So there's, um, there's six people on my team and it's made it harder. I've had to let go of more things. And so that's one of the things you really have to prepare yourself for. If you're going to do this, you're going to be doing things a certain way when you start out, but then you begin to lose control of that because you're going to need help. And so right now um, we don't, I think, you know, I charge everything through the card, the, 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 the data normally flows through that. And then there's like, Hey, it's a gas station. You, you, in the QuickBooks, you itemize that over towards fuel expenses. So, I mean, you, you can, and if you're a good record keeper, then I think you would probably do better than I'm doing. So uh, you have like a business card because you have a business account. I take it and everything just gets charged through there. That's yes, I do. I do have a card that is uh yeah for the business okay and then each one of my technicians actually have their own card we ended up um, going with another firm that's like a um they're like an expenses firm so they each have a business credit card that we load with money for them okay. so when they're out doing this work um one of the things about field service is you really rely on you you learn to you learn to look what businesses are around you and you find all the small places, like I know where to go get a hydraulic hose made for a dental chair, or I know where I can go buy a capacitor or a relay, 
or where I can get electrical stuff. And that's the most fun part about my, like today I figured out Menards actually has contactors for ACs because my, my neighbor's AC went bad, but you know, things like that. I was training my technician and I was just showing him like, look, dude, this is, this is how you get results done because anyone can say, Oh, well, it's broke. But if you know where to go locally and get stuff and get parts and ways to get people by, then it's uh, it's it, that's what you'll build your business on. So Jason, when you get started, how do you build clientele? Like uh, you mentioned that you start doing cold calls. Do you do like uh, flyers and then you stop by offices and hand them a flyer? Like, how did you do it? And what Dude. would you do maybe better if you could? Okay. This is going to be my probably favorite part of this interview. Okay. Um, in the beginning, I, I, have you ever used Yelp? Yeah. Okay. What do you use Yelp for? Uh, well, uh, it depends because uh, I use Google for whenever I search for a company, if okay. there's something I need, even if it's a company, I know where it's at. Believe it or not, I, it's, it's weird. I look them up on Google, you know, just to see what other people say about it and whatnot. So I, okay. I, so you're, so you're gonna, you're gonna use, you know, you're gonna use Yelp to find some place to, to what, to give them your money, right? Yeah, right, okay. right. Well, it occurred to me that I could use Yelp to find people to give me money. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay. So on my phone here, right? So check this out, dude. I'm going to just type in the word dentist. All right. I'm just typing in, typing in dentist right there, dentist. Yeah. And then there's a, a little map here. And that right there, my friend, what? that's my, dude, that's my treasure map. Okay. So, wow. all right. So watch, and all then right. I'm going to, and then I'm going to like kind of open that up a little bit and I'm just going to pick an area. And then there's a button up here that just says redo search in this area. And then boom, there's more. Wow. Okay. Okay. So this right here, Yelp in your pocket. And I, I dare anybody listening to this right now, just do it right dentist and just do a search around you and then just goof around with it now what's cool about that method because it's what you asked is that no matter where you're at you've got a treasure map of, of places to walk in the door now the way i initially started going was um i actually was uh man it's it's a crazy story i initially had about five hours to kill in a town a ways away and I went and I took that map and I started cold calling and I walked in the door and I said, hi, my name's Jason. I'm a biomedical equipment technician and I'm looking to do some informational interviewing about how you repair your dental equipment. Or if it's a veterinarian, how you do your veterinary equipment, physical therapy, physical. Dude, I got hired twice in three hours and twice for three hours. And I walked out of that, that five hour session with 450 bucks in my pocket to my name. Wow. Uh huh. Uh huh. I, I've told, I've told my text, and I and and I could be challenged on this. Give me Yelp, give me my toolbox, my my truck, and just send me to any place. I don't care what town it is, and just let me do the Yelp thing, and I'll I'll walk back to you at the end of the day with a grand, like like that's so it's walking in the door. It's it's explaining what you do, and it's it is trying to connect your skill with their pain. And, okay. you know, you ask them, Hey, you know, are you satisfied with your current? And, but in the beginning, before you're actually in business, you're informational interviewing and nobody, you know, you might get some death eyes. You might get, you know, some rejection. One of the things about this though, is that you've got to be prepared to be rejected. Ultimately oh, people sure. are going to tell you to get lost, but I would say receptionists generally are paid to be pleasant. And so you'll see it in their eyes though. And so you pretty much just um, do that. That's how you go ahead and figure out, you know, or build, that's how I built it. Now, so Yelp is stage one. That was my first thing. Now get a hold of this. My, my second thing, now this is actually my card initially. Now this, this is second stage. Do you see that? Okay. Okay. Do you know what those uh, things are on it? What? <laughs> Bro, those are earrings. <laughs> so, so okay. I right over here, like you, I've got a 3D printer 
right over there. That little guy right there. So that's my dual extrusion 3D printer. And I, I 3D printed earrings to go through my business cards. And I will tell you, this has been incredible. <laughs> I walk in the door with a set of earrings, hand this to the reception. Now, dentistry is a caring profession. And there's a lot of women. There are some men, but it's a lot of women. And I tell you what, these earrings, I have actually walked two stories. One of them, I walked in and gave this, this card to the person I was working with. She made me go back out to my truck and get nine more sets for the nine other girls that were there. Okay. <laughs> so I literally got, had to give my business card to everybody. Now, secondly, my, this is crazy because I don't, somebody comment if this ever happened to you, I might be the only one. I gave three sets of these to a dental office, a female doctor, and she called me a couple days later and she says, Jason, she goes, I don't need service, but I love the earrings. I'm an instructor at a dental school, a local university, and I would love to be able to give these to my, my students. And I said, that's great. She goes, I want to buy some from you. And I'm like, okay, well, how much? And she goes, how many? She goes, 25 sets. And I'm like, okay. She goes, she goes, I'm willing to pay for them. And she goes, how much? And I go, okay, well, $5 a set. No problem, right? 125 bucks. And so I said, all I need from you is the 25 of your business card because she's a business owner. And then I'll put them in there. She goes, oh, no need. You can just keep them in your business card. So I literally had a customer buy <laughs> my business cards from me. Wow. She, she bought my business cards. That's but they very original. Earrings. That's very original, man. Dude, <laughs> it really is. this right here, I'm telling you what, Yelp, now, one of the, now the, the business card has kind of evolved a little bit. That's my newer bright idea, dental repair. And then we, uh, you know, we had, uh, we had some fun with it and it's like 99 problems, but great service ain't one. Right. And so the earrings are in the 99. So, um, but that's, uh, the earrings. I've got a way to put those together and those are all handcrafted. Um, but, but if you're going to be successful in this, you've got to actually put in the effort and you've got to get in the mind of the person that is going to actually spend money to bring you into their office. And you've got to actually provide them a service. Now, now the thing about dentistry is all dental equipment is revenue generating. Okay. It all generates revenue. And um, Zig Ziglar said, it's better to spend more than you could have than not as much as you should have. Mm. And so really with dentistry, these doctors, they all need to spend money to keep everything going. Because if they go cheap, okay, and it fails, then it's going to cost them money. I, did, I was actually servicing a dental office one day where their, their vacuum was down. I provided same day service and I was able to save their afternoon, but their morning was gone. And I asked them, I'm like, how much did that cost you? And they said, we had to reschedule $5,000 worth of dental appointments. And, and, she, and she said, but Jason, we're so glad you're here. She goes, you saved us six grand of appointments in the afternoon. So the service that we're providing is insane. And in that, that treasure map that I showed you, every single one of those offices is churning patients through. If their compressor's down, I mean, the compressor's the lung of a practice mm. and it all needs maintenance. And the thing is about, now you mentioned earlier regulations. And I think that's one thing that's really surprising about dentistry is it's underregulated. These dental offices are regulated by pain. Okay, sure, they've got laws they have to live up to. But essentially, if their stuff doesn't work and they can't see patients, their, their autoclave goes down, they can't sterilize instruments, which means they can't see patients. They're, you know, they've got critical, their, their chair dies, they can't sit a patient in it. They can't see patients. X-ray, you know, can't, it's, it's all about those focal points. And dentistry has probably about five different zones where if that equipment doesn't work, they can't see patients. And it's in, in our competition are these billion dollar companies that have so many, you know, they've got so many customers, they can afford to keep their prices high and they sell supplies. And so the way that this works is a supplier will sell supplies to a dental office. And then because the office buys supplies somewhere, they call in the service. So really service can be a loss leader because they're doing so much money in. So 
the, the suppliers are not tripping over regular customers with equipment that's breaking because probably it's old and probably it's this whole weird demographic that you just like, they need love. They need love and they're not getting it. And that's us. So <laughs> it's crazy. Like there's so many mind blowing things I've learned. So, uh, do you set up like contracts or reoccurring service plans with your vendor, with your uh, customers? Is that how that's you- a, That's a really great question. I was, initially I was only doing hourly work and okay. then I hire, and then I, um, I have a regular rate, which is 175 an hour. Um, that's my business rate. And then I've got an after hours rate of 225. And then I've got a travel rate of $75 for any customer outside of 30 minutes. Okay. And that's, that's kind of how we run it. Now it's kind of in the beginning, I was 150 an hour, but, but that's also factoring in that I've got a 6,000 square foot warehouse, six employees. Like it's, you know, and we're not billing hours every single day. My team is developing and we are, I am training my techs and they are becoming more um, independent we're starting to get points places where we're doing, you know, over a thousand a day in labor. So like, there's some really cool things happening, but there's also like some downtime where we're training and, and, you know, hence the YouTube, that was one thing where we really started doing YouTube because I wanted to give them kind of a, a way to, you know, to, to, to kind of learn, learn using different means. So the, the uh, the rates and stuff are, you know, the suppliers though, they can really afford to drive those rates down. So they might be cheaper, but the rate is really based on the goodness of the customer. I guess that's what I was getting to. So if you have an office that's spending a lot of money in supplies, the, the, the supplier can afford to really like undercut the rate okay. and to get in there and to sell more stuff. Well, if it's not a really high paying customer, then what they do is they really make the rate high to basically kind of price themselves out. Wow. And, or if they have to go in, they just get paid really well. And so like there's this swinging and, and, and so it's, uh, but these guys are doing billions of dollars of supplies and all we're doing is service, but we have the ability to specialize and to do really well in service and to provide right. results that other people can't. Um, because the politics, the thing, the thing about dentistry that people don't realize is the political scheme of dentistry is that there are manufacturers like um, larger companies that I can think of that are like you ones you would know of. Yeah. And those are, they deal with other large dental supply companies that you can Google. There's a few of them, probably three. And they uh, may... I think they might've even just had a lawsuit about price fixing, but Google it. It's out it's, there. It's almost a monopoly between all of them because, you know, they, they know not to undercut each other because they have their own little markets. So it's, yeah, yeah it's really, but what happens is the big, the big manufacturers and then the big suppliers, they're all, they all work together because the, the manufacturer will say, Hey, will, you know, will, like, or actually it's the way it goes is this is the supplier has the power because they say, we'll buy all this stuff from you, chair maker, if you only sell through us and other companies in our category, which means that they will not deal through you. Because one of the ways that dental service works, it's through dealing equipment and supplies. Now, I can't really say like what my margins are, but I will say there are good margins on the types of equipment that I that I sell and parts and and things because yeah. the way the way that this works is once and as I can say for dentistry the way this works is for my business I initially started with companies like DCI, RPI, yeah. Parts Warehouse. There's um, uh, a few there, there's other companies out there and you're going to begin learning like who these companies are and they all sell parts that are commonly used, it's almost like, you know, I, and I wouldn't want to ever insult one of the companies, but it's almost like um, DCI and RPI are kind of like the Kragen or AutoZone or the okay. O'Reilly. More like uh, generic type of uh, parts? Yeah, they're, okay. they're quality made, 
but it's like, it's reverse engineered, like RPI reverse engineers, a lot of stuff. You guys know that in biomed, sure. sure. but in dentistry, I've got a whole book and it's all dental. And then DCI is one though, they specialize mainly in dental, but you mob around with a couple of their kits. Like I have a valve kit and O-ring kit, and there's some kits that you get. And when you have the kit, it's kind of got, you know, it's a few hundred dollars, but it has everything you need for that family, like family of, of part. And but the politic, the political landscape is really bleak because you have these suppliers that are really holding these dentists, their feet to the fire. And as an independent, what I've done is approach the, the doctor with, um, as a business owner, I empathize with them right. because I mean, I get it. I know what expenses feel like. I know that I'm an expense to them. And so what I try to do is really just approach them in a way where, um, you know, hey, I, I bill for, you know, I bill for fair work. Now, what I tell my doctors is this. I say, doc, I go, when you call me, okay, like, and I show up, it's like, that's a billable event. Okay. And yeah. I say, I say, you know, and sometimes, okay, most of the time you're paying for the results, most of the time, but sometimes you're just paying for the effort. You know, like what if, cause right. I, I think it's biomeds. We don't really think about that. Like what happens when you can't fix something? What happens when, you know, you're just kind of like there drinking your coffee or some productive <laughs> time, or what if you're, you know, cause I used to love my coffee. I mean, I, I, you know, and I still do, but the point being, okay. Is that when you're leaping onto the fire in these offices, when they're asking you to just pull off miracles on neglected equipment, Mm-hmm. that that has no regulation there's no regulation that says how often a doctor has to maintain their compressor i mean nobody cares nobody is inspecting um i mean i see wild things if you want to see crazy stuff i've got a tiktok it's um at b i dental m i look it up i've got tiktok <laughs> videos on there dude i've got tiktok videos yeah i tell you what that is Jason, crazy. now if you because i talked about like setting up scheduled uh plans now, oh, is, yeah. is, that, is that something that you can uh, set up with them so that now they're on a set schedule? Where yeah, they, I'm sorry. They, well, I'm no, no, sorry. it's, yeah, it's cool like, because I, I'm, I'm just sorry. thinking, I was thinking <laughs> while you're talking, like if there is no regulation and they don't even know that this stuff needs regular maintenance, you're offering them a solution, an insurance policy, if you will, on their own livelihood. So, yes. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. it's I'm, so, I'm so sorry about that. I just, no, it's so cool. I, I, this I, is I, the I, curse I, of business ownership. I'm sorry. My I'm, brain is a million places. I, I'm just, once. I'm just completely uh, thinking to myself, like there's so much stuff I never even thought of. I never yeah. even considered the fact that, you know, uh, when you're walking into a place, well, that, that was one of my next questions is you go for one problem, but I've done dental before. Dental can be very needy. You walk in the mm-hmm. door and you get five or six, oh, by the ways which is, you know, oh, by the way, do you mind checking this out? Or what about this over here? How do you yeah. bill for that? Do you do it based on time or you do it? Uh, you know, sometimes obviously you probably throw in a freebie because you're trying to earn a new customer or something, but how, how would you handle that situation? Because dental specifically is known for the, oh, by the ways, like as soon as you walk in, they'll, they'll give you a, a laundry list of stuff. I would say, um, so, all right. So I'll work backwards on that one. So sorry. Um, the, uh, <laughs> this is, uh, so, all right. So working backwards on that, if I'm walking in the door and I'm trying, you know, I'm using Yelp, right. And I walk in the door and they, they're, they're like, you know, Hey, this is broken. I fixed a trash compactor before like that, um, in, in a dental office, you know, and the, it was a, it was a freebie. Um, but because I was there and the thing about what we do, right. If they call you in, it's one thing, but if you're there on your own salesmanship, if you can give away a 10 minute or or 15 minute, you know, solve a problem, show them what you could do kind of a free, you know, first hit, you know, for free, you, number one, you walk in there and you get a little bit of, um, you know, you get behind the door, right? You start looking around, you can see their equipment, right? Cause as you're fixing stuff, you're looking around. So it's some recon. So it's worth doing. If you can ever get behind the door, do it. Um, now, okay. So to work backwards. Um, so you asked me about, um, like how I bill for service it's hourly. So I get in there, I pretty much say, Hey, on site from nine to 10 AM, 
did blah, 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 blah. Use these parts, you know, one hour at 175, you know, whatever parts, whatever shipping. Because the four things um, that I bill for are labor, parts, um, travel, and then um, labor, parts, travel, and shipping. Those are the four things. And in your state, different things are going to be taxed. In Michigan, um, shipping's taxed, and then uh, parts are taxed, and also new and used equipment. So those are the four things. And, you know, I pretty much have that in my mind, you know, I'm, I'm keeping track of that. I also, I would also say that I use my phone a lot. I mean, this is probably a relevant point to interject this. I use my phone a lot for like time marking. So when I show okay. up to an office, I'll take a picture of the front door and then I have a timestamp on the phone of when I got there. That's excellent. And then, proof. I, and then I take time and then I, and I take pictures while I'm in there of different things I'm working on, obviously, because you're working on stuff, you take it apart, you know, take a picture beforehand, blah, 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 using uh, like tech support, send them photos. So throughout my phone has, you know, just a crap ton of photos on it from dental offices. Like there's so much pictures of equipment on my phone, but it's how I help my brain remember, because you're going to start, you know, um, Dale Carnegie said the sweetest sound to a person um, to their, to their ear is their name. And so one of the things you're going to be doing in all these offices is you're going to be remembering names, you know, your Rolodex is going to be filling up now. Okay. So yeah, normally you build time materials. Now for the service plan, I did create a service plan and I did this because of what I had indicated earlier that I had to scale my business to kind of take care of this demand. And it occurred to me that, man, if I set up a service plan that was 200 a month for an office, that would give them a discount over the 175 an hour. So basically okay. 200 for two hours. And what it looks like is we do a 25 point inspection. We cover, we basically go through 25 list items, check it off for the month. And then what we do is go ahead and um, there's in there, there's a repair um, page where they basically put the problem, location, the tech that discovered it. And then we have a place where we can put corrective action in there. Okay. And so- this is what I've basically pr provided as a, it's called the preventive maintenance membership. And so I've got seven offices on this and now it's a little, it didn't work quite the way I thought it was because what I'm finding is it's really hard to hit an appointment in an office sometimes mm -hmm. because the work is really chaotic. You're getting a lot of phone calls and if you're the one that starts this business, it's going to be really hard for you because in the beginning, you're going to just be begging for the phone to call, phone to ring. It's going to ring and you're just going to be, oh, okay, great. You know, you'll be there. They'll be like, oh man, I've never had this fast a response, you know, and, the, and, then, and then you get busier and then it's like trying to like schedule it. So um, the other service, I mean, I want to kind of jump back to that because you asked about QuickBooks. Now we also use a company called Service Fusion. And now that is actually where we um, load our um, work orders for okay. equipment repair. So the um, work orders that we put, like, so like if my admin gets a call, they make a work order and schedule it. And then that way it's a little bit, I mean, I've got my accounting system and now I've got my work order system Okay. because QuickBooks online is not really a, you it's not really a work order system, but when yeah, you're no, small, no. your brain just kind of holds it and you just kind of keep track of it. But once you're bigger, you need something more than that. So yes, the preventive maintenance membership. And that has been a little bit challenging. Mm -hmm. We, um, I, I thought to myself, man, if I can get my techs to do 20 memberships each, that's about, you know, one membership a day. Now I do work my guys four tens. So I've got nice. one, I've got two guys, my two main guys, um, one is Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, off Friday. And then the other one's Monday, Tuesday, um, off Wednesday, works Thursday and works Friday. And they alternate back and forth. And so for scheduling, I would say this might be something relevant to biomed shops by giving guys those four 10 hour days and having kind of a, a, a rotation on that Friday, like every other weekend, they get the Friday off. I'm finding that my production with them is, is, is good and they're getting the benefit of three-day weekends every right. weekend, which is quality of life. So nice. I'm doing, I'm doing that, that for them, but um, that, that, that's kind of, uh, but I thought to myself, if, if we got 20 offices per tack, then that is going to be, you know, $200 times 20, that's four grand a month, which is going to be, you know, kind of close to whatever their salary is going to be. 
um, maybe underneath it. But the, the thing is, is whenever you're in an office, they're, they're always giving you extra stuff. So really yes. the preventive maintenance plan, even if you're there just two, two hours, the, the, you're building trust and they're asking you for other solutions. And that's where you get sales opportunities. You get, you know, to kind of help them modernize or solve persistent problems, or you just know you're coming back next month. So okay. if you can look and you put, put it down on your list and um, we started to kind of explore with five gallon buckets, put the customer's name on the five gallon bucket so that we can just kind of like have a little catch all bin for the office so that, you know, you may make a notation, Hey, they need this knob. You throw it in the bucket. <laughs> and then, you know, cause that's a challenge of field service okay. is that if you remember they need something and you're not um, and it's at the shop half hour away, then that's not good for anybody. So that's right. the challenge. Wow. That's, you know, you've got some excellent ideas. Um, uh, Someday, uh, I'd, I'd like to, because I, I visit my family out in Michigan all the time, yeah. I'd like to stop by sometime and see just how the heck you guys do it. Because I, I'm, I have all these ideas running in my head on how, how I would run a business. And it's completely different than how that you have made it work. So that's, that's pretty amazing. So you've got uh, demand services. You've got scheduled maintenance that you've set up plans for. Mm -hmm. Now, do you have any large projects or anything that you're working on with any uh, public entities or anything? Well, um, my largest, so there, so in dentistry, there's um, their um, uh, dental service organizations or DSOs. I think it's, I think that's what it is. Um, they are large firms that own a multitude of offices. They can own a dozen offices or, you know, or over a hundred they can, and they basically, what they do is it's a big corporation and they will have, they buy out individual practices and then they basically run those from their corporate headquarters. And so to get on with a DSO or a, a company that owns multiple offices is really nice because if you're doing service for that group, um, you, all your checks are kind of coming from the same place and you're being dispatched and you, you know, if they've got one office way over there that needs help, you kind of get called in because of your reputation on other sides of the organization. But there's, um, so there's definitely um, tho those um, larger organizations. Um, I'm trying to remember where I was going with that. What was the, sorry. I, I'm just curious day. if you got a large projects or anything that you want. Yes, the, I'm sorry. Yeah. So the project, the, the, the other large customer is, so yeah, I have some DSOs and then I've also got a, a community health center that we're helping. That's actually uh, through one of our local um, counties. Okay. Now the project I'm really excited about is one of the things that dental offices need is they need training. Um, it's just okay. like you and yeah. your, your staff, right? Like you've got to go train them how to use the equipment, except the, the thing about where, where you're at in a biomed shop, okay, is that you kind of just are always providing the training because you're always there. Right. And they're part of your organization, right? Like you guys are all on the same team. Well, I'm on my customer's team as well, but we're kind of like, you know, we're different organizations. And so what's occurred to me is that there's a lot of things that break in offices that are recurring and that a little bit of training will go a long ways in helping them reduce that. Now, one of the things that, that I'm really thinking about is what happens when a dental office is like two hours away? What happens if instead of waiting for two weeks, you know, what happens if they wait like two weeks for service, which some do. Now, what if I was able to make a one day full training session where I was able to bring in an individual from each office, okay, okay and train them in a hotel. And so what I've started doing is coming up with like over, over here, I've got this, this cool little, this cool little cart right here. And this is a dental unit. And I, I basically built a whole delivery unit right here. And so this unit, what I'm hoping is to be able to actually, this is uh, something I can just pick up and set down. It's got a self-contained bottle system. You can just hook in with it. And I've, so what I, what I'm thinking is that what if I was able to get maybe, you know, get like 10 of those and put them in a hotel and deliver training to maybe 10 customers from that area. Huh. And so that's something I'm really excited about. I mean, the, I, I am right now trying to just come up with a curriculum in my brain and really trying to organize it. I'm definitely looking for collaboration out in the field. I could see something like this. I mean, 
you know, really this could be, this could be the business right mm-hmm. here. Um, but that's kind of in the future. I mean, that's, okay. that's a, you know, pretty honest look into what I've got going on, but, uh, but no, it's fun. Every day is a challenge. There's just a ton of, 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 uh, really great, good dental offices out there that just need service. But when you go in and you see an office that's full of biofilm or you see a compressor that's, you know, blowing nasty stuff out, (laughs) or you see, you know, an autoclave that's just like blowing steam out or maybe about to catch on fire, you know, I mean, this is where, even though it's only, only dental, okay, this is the heart of healthcare in communities. You know, I mean, yeah, oral yeah, healthcare sure. is like huge, right? It all starts. Yeah, they're the everywhere. Mouth. They're absolutely everywhere. And we all go to a dentist. So like, we all can kind of like, you know, your, your, you know, all your family goes to one. Actually today, we just put in a delivery unit over in a neighboring community that one of my techs lives in and his, his, um, his relatives actually are, are patients there. And it's something the doctor, you know, we, you know, they always ask, you know, Hey, how's your, you know, blah, 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 you know, and it, you know, it's, uh, it's interesting. Cause I, I looked over and I said, I said, dude, I go, you know, this awesome thing you just rebuilt and we're putting in, did you know that your grandma is gonna, yeah, is, is gonna (laughs) benefit from the work you're doing right here. And it's just like, his eyes got big, you know, and it's like, that's true. It got real, but, but we know this is biomeds and that's what I love about the industry. You know, like we've got the skill and the integrity and um, you know, this, this life I'm living here, if I can help anybody, I would love to, I would love to just help get you a better per- perspective into it. Well, that leads me to one final question. I've, I promise I won't take up too much more of your time. What's your relationship with, uh, with other technicians in your area? Do you have any? Oh man! Do you work with anybody, or, or are you completely an island? How does it work out there? Oh man, that that's such a good question. In the beginning, when you start out, you're gonna be like so, like kind of nervous, like who sees me out here, right? Because you're gonna be walking in there, like who am I taking this from, right? And in the beginning, I have a really good friend um, that was actually an instructor over at the Air, in the Air Force um, by the name of Matt, Matt Lau. He used to work with a company called Dental Fix. And th- he's okay. a good man. He's got awesome things going on. I mean, definitely Matt, he's still out there, you know, connect with him on LinkedIn if he can, but he's a, he's a good dude. And he's really well, like, plugged in. And Matt saw a post about some biofilm, I think. I can still remember, like, squeezing biofilm out of a line on on a, a, a Facebook group. And, um, he goes, Hey, there's an operator up there. Um, the, you know, my, my real good friend, Daniel, and he goes, it wasn't at the time, but he goes, Hey, there's an operator up there from this, you know, from dental fix. And he goes, you should reach out to him. And I'm like, Oh man, you know, like yikes co- competition. Well, then my phone rings and it's, it's Daniel. Cause Matt told Daniel about me. And so we ended up having like a dinner and, he kind of like was trying to hire me really. But <laughs> what happened was I was like, dude, I'm sad. I'm, I'm good. I'm going to keep doing this. And so, but over, over the years, what's happened is he and I have become like best friends, you know, because you're really kind of, we're both independents, but mm-hmm. we operate kind of in the same area, but we've got a lot of like respect for one another. And we really team up a lot because in, as an independent, what's going to happen is you're going to find that there's going to be work that it's going to be too hard for you to do by yourself, or you're going to need to have access to maybe something somebody else has because of politics, because somebody might be a little bit more diversified than you are, or maybe their experience And having somebody nearby where you could actually bring them in. And we do this. um, I don't, he's never wore my shirt, but I've wore his shirt before. And I've gone in there as actually one of his guys. Okay. And so we've worked together. So I would say, Um, this would lead to like a really like, so that's Daniel from dental fix. Um, I would also, I've also got some contacts with the major suppliers. Those are a little bit more touchy, but they're good because the text themselves will, will often talk with you. Sure. And what's neat about them is they're often putting in, you know, remember I told you about all that equipment that is, um, really pricey and that we don't have access to. Mm -hmm. dude they're selling that into some of these offices where stuff's got to come out and they need someone to take that stuff away so we get our hands on that 
and then that actually turns in a resource that we can actually kind of like put back out. So dude, there's like some, some really neat things. So if you can relate to other technicians, um, that also is relevant for side work. I would say to any of your listeners, if you are a competent biomed and you have, you know, the skill to work on life support equipment, you are skilled enough to work on dental equipment. And you probably have some dental repair company in your area where you've got somebody like me, okay, I'm in Ann Arbor, but you know, you might have somebody wherever you're at, just Google independent dental repair, or as you're interview, as you're doing informational interviewing, like I told you earlier, they're going to say that they use a big supplier, but if they say, no, I use so-and-so from blah, 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 that informational interviewing session, even if you don't get hired, what'll happen, right, is you're going to learn who all the players are. Mm-hmm. go take Yelp, figure out who all the players are, and then start calling the players that are independent and make your presence known and your ability to work on autoclaves. Specifically, I would say autoclaves because an autoclave is rectangular. It's transportable. It's something that is very commonly worked on. And mm-hmm. you can easily work on that in your workbench in your house. Right. And what you would do is you'd basically go and pick the unit up, maybe drop off a loaner. You would do it at your house and you would be able to probably be very fairly compensated for piecemeal work and probably um, fit in very nicely with that other independent dental technicians area. And you're going to find a friend and he's going to call, Hey dude, I got an install. Nice. He's going to kind of, you know, connect you to other opportunities, but that's really, that's the thing that I think I would have, I wish I would have known it when I was doing side work back in California, because I think I was just doing like a lot of the wrong side work. I was like messing around in like beauty salons, trying to fix their beauty devices. I was, I've been worked in like a seasoning plant, working on industrial stuff. I mean, I was just like trying to get any little side work I could And yet if I would have realized that I could have done side work for a dental person, I think it's much more compatible. And it also kind of gives you more access to something that generates a little bit more revenue. Very, very interesting, man. Well, I'll tell you what, this has been uh, way more informative than I figured it was because we went way outside the scope of, (laughs) because I, I, since I've never run a business, I just had no idea. You know, and I, that's the thing. I think most of these people don't have any idea and and it's absolutely fascinating. Well, I hope that we get to do this again, man, because I, uh, I, my brain just doesn't shut off. I I think of questions so fast and, and you have answered almost every single thing that I have even thought of. Um, I, I would like some time to get Eddie back on here because he's got a whole different perspective in a different market. And, uh, guys, I would like this to be like a regular little, uh, betterment session you know where people can learn about options for their career so thank you oh yeah and we're and we're definitely here to you know help if if uh if i can i would love love to help um i will say things are pretty busy um one of the things that i haven't really widely uh announced but that i do is going to be a part of my life is i'm going to be having to uh leave the the country here for about six months Mm -hmm. Um, so one of the things I have going on is, uh, getting ready, ready for that. Um, that's part of the, uh, my military service. Right. And so that's going to be, um, challenging. So I would say that, that mixed in with everything, there is the, um, there's definitely freedom, but I also feel like the owning your own business, it's kind of like you said, you never really get a break from it and it's always on your mind. And it really is like having another child and (laughs) it is because it has a social, you know, it's got an EIN, you know, it's like you basically give life to something. Mm -hmm. And it's, um, it's really, I would say it's hard. My wife's involved. And, um, you know, I I would say just kind of on the side, I mean, I'm a man of faith, I've got, you know, a good church family, I try to have, you know, value, you know, my values guide what we do, having a very strong um, ethic is important. Um, But, um, I would, I would say, I would throw this in here. Like, like we kind of came up with a five-step process for how we're doing our business. Okay. And our five-step process is, you know, is uh, thorough equipment evaluation, honest estimates and options, quality repairs that last, staff training, and preventive maintenance. Okay. 
Okay. And on those things, I am not marketing based on speed and I'm not marketing based on cheapness. And so okay. I would just really, you know, encourage your, your, you know, your guys, and I'm encouraging you to just make sure that whatever you're building, make sure you know why you're building it. There's a lot of days where I really kind of envy the guys in the shop, you know, that could just kind of like punch out and go home and have I've a never check. I've had it. that luxury, man, not in years. And I work in a shop. I, my phone goes off all the time. Okay. Okay. All the time. I mean, oh. I used to, it's, it's, <laughs> it's so hard but it's like i don't even get it's not even like you get overtime when it phone rings or when you come in and stuff it's kind of like is as an owner it's like you work harder than anybody else but you're you're also um you know you're you're just honestly i'm just trying to keep everybody paid and fed you know like my my main concern right now is about my people and um but but it's also about the community and the one of the things about youtube is getting with creators like you and and really finding guys that are interested in pouring in to, you know, the next, you know, that talent pipeline that's out there. And like a lot of these things, I think there's a new school and an old school, right? The old school is try to keep as much as you can to yourself. And I'm kind of from yeah. a different place where I'm not really afraid of, of really like giving away my earrings and, you know, stuff like this, dude, because I'm going to like, I've got more ideas coming out, right? This is just a fountain. It's a geyser of ideas. And that's business ownership, right? You've got to have that. But if all you're going to do is like, I would say a person that I would probably caution about business is somebody who's just simply just ripping off like what somebody else is doing. Um, I think that dental, the, the franchise of dental fix, I think it is a good franchise because you can pay a lot of, you can pay money and you can get set up. But the problem is, is that people are paying for a turnkey they're paying for a turnkey business, but really what a business takes is it takes heart. It takes getting out there. You know, it takes, you know, like quitting time. Like one day I'm hoping that my business is going to run on its own. And, you know, my guys are going to be able to be self-sufficient. And I think this time away is going to give them a chance to do that. But, you know, in the meantime, you know, I'm just trying to do everything I can to, you know, again, sharpen the tool of, verbally educating, which I think is kind of what the YouTube right. is doing. It's given me oh, yeah. a chance to, to, to sharpen, um, to sharpen that skill. Cause I think if you can communicate and you can, and you can teach, um, you're going to be in a really good place when it comes time to empowering other people. And if you empower somebody else, be it a customer, a colleague, or even a, a employee, you know, they're going to be loyal to you. Right. Because we can all think of those people that poured into us and, I'm really hoping to be that, you know, like, Hey, the dental equipment repair channel, boom. You know, I want to be that guy. And, uh, cause there's just so much out here that it's, it's yeah. crazy, but I really appreciate you, you Justin, thanks to you for your time. And, uh, oh, uh, thank you, man. Uh, this, this has been fantastic. I wasn't really sure if you were going to find the time to be able to do this, but we're, we're going to help out a lot of people, man. Uh, because I do believe that the future of, of biomed or, or clinical engineering in general, is going to be a smaller uh, variety. It's people in smaller practices, kind of like, uh, well, I used to fix photocopiers. And, okay. um, you know, back in the day, you would have a company like CSS would uh, be contracted by Konica Minolta to fix all the copiers in a region. And I do believe that biomed or dental is going to kind of go that way. Instead of the OEM having uh, their guys in every city and every, every stretch of the, the country, it's just mm -hmm. cheaper to train uh, somebody that's licensed for a certain area, you know? And I, I think that that's going to be the future of Biomed. And, you know, we're just here to make sure that everybody is kept up to the standard, that they know that we're serious about this. And I think that YouTube is going to be uh, an introduction for all these young people that really have never heard of us. They, they don't even know what we can do. I have uh, one side of the puzzle. You have the other side, man. And uh, that's why I love watching your channel. It's been fantastic. You, I've always said your editing has been better than mine. Uh, your last, your last video was actually quite comical. <laughs> so <laughs> I took, a, I took a little bit of different. Uh, I, I, it was a little different. I'm waiting for, and I don't know, may, maybe um, we should have a different conversation. But I, I'd kind of like to get some pointers from you on how to get. Um, I, I'm waiting for a video to really pop. It seems like my biggest mm. video is one where we just kind of went step by step doing a process. Uh, that was my very first, but it was also the first video, right, but, right. um, I'm kind of, uh, but I've, 
I've told my guys, I'm like, dude, we have the makings of a reality TV show because the stuff we imagine. see in these offices, <laughs> I mean, we have a ball every day. Like this is wow. such a fun uh, place and time. So if you ever have any uh, recommendations of things that, you know, you think would do well, I mean, I'm willing to try them. All right, Jason. Well, I've taken enough of your time. Thank you so much for this. And uh, guys, thank you all for watching. I know this has been a long video, but this is a very important one because I do believe that small business owners, it's, it is an option. Uh, you can also contract yourself out 1099. Um, we've, we've talked about enough stuff, man. I've, I've got some research to do on some of this stuff because uh, I, I'm serious. I'm, I'm very serious. I've, I'm a very independent person. And, uh, you know, I like interacting with my customers just like you do. Um, YouTube is just, it's not even a side hustle. It's, it's just, it's just something I just start doing one day, you know? Yeah. And uh, I, I just like interacting with people. That's why this is awesome for me, man. Mm -hmm. So thanks, Jason, for this. I, I do appreciate this. And uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. Thanks, Justin. All right. See you, man.